Assalamu alaikum from beautiful hot Nasiriya, a city in southern Iraq. Today I'm going to take you to have a very special dish. It's a Mesopotamian dish called Mafruthe. It's a fish and we're going to go inside this restaurant with Chef Ali Sido. He's going to show us the dish, how it's prepared. And then after this, we're going to go to Ur, an ancient Mesopotamian city-state. I'm very excited. Let's go. Rock and roll. It is scorching. 48 today. Yes. Chef Ali, welcome. How are you doing? Habibi. Habibi. Hiya, Kalla, Adnahna. Yani, welcome. Perfect. Let's go inside. Jafar, how are you doing, my man? Yes, welcome. You're, you're our translator today. <laughs> so, this is kitchen, and over here we have the fish. We're going to work on fish. So basically saying that uh, in the south we mainly work with fish because of the amount of water we have. Exactly. We can uh, have fish for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Oh, me too. Every single day. So this fish is going to be really interesting. And this, this type of dish is, is called mahrutha. This is basically dried fish and some uh, tomato paste, tomatoes, as well as some spices. Oh, I love that. And what's really, really interesting about it is how its roots coming, uh, how its roots come from ancient Mesopotamia. Amazing. So, I'm super excited. So what type of fish is it though? It's a shilich. Uh, so we call it shilich fish. And this is a... Uh, uh, like from the Gulf, this fish, or is it from uh, fresh water? So uh, in, in this region, it's found everywhere, from the river to the marshes to the uh, Gulf. Okay, so Chef Ali right now is taking apart the fish. He's taking out the bones, and he's gonna leave all the meat, right? Oh man, guys, salty. Oh look at that, <laughs> beautiful. It just falls apart. So the way it works is that he put the fish into that a pot that's boiling, right? And then after 15 minutes, everything is cooked and he takes it out. It's going to change your food system. This food is really amazing. I'm sure. I mean, the Mesopotamian people, they ate this, right? Yes. By the way, this is dried fish. Yeah, yeah. It used to be much uh, coarser. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. It's sitting in the sun forever. Salt, man. This is so salty. Wow. You're gonna need a lot of water. Smell it, you know? Wow. It's nice to break all of it up, huh? It smells so salty. Wow. That's gonna be a lot of salt. You need some water. For sure. <laughs> what Chef Ali's been doing is he's been removing all the bones. Once he's done with that, he's gonna mix the tomato paste and tomatoes, correct? Yes. Yes. David, David. Wow, wow, wow. Look me, look me. That's funny. Look me. <laughs> <laughs> without looking, man. Yeah, without looking, dude. It's in the chop of a finger. One minute. And shift Borak. Borak. Backwards? Borak. <laughs> Borak. Oh, he's doing it. Look me. Chef, no? Yeah, bro, this is nuts. So he finished um, separating all the bones from the fish. That's ready. Now he's going to chop off the onions, the tomatoes, uh, some lime, and then he's going to cut. I guess this is the appetizer, right? This, this fish is up for the appetizer, the yes. separate one. That's a side. Got it, got it. Ooh. And here we got some garlic, garlic cloves.
We just added the onion and the garlic cloves and the aroma coming out of there is phenomenal. <laughs> wow. Plus the butter, right? Loco butter. Oh, that's that's amazing. <laughs> Next up, tomato paste. Smells very good. Tomato paste, it got so nice. tomatoes, garlic, onions. You know, sometimes it's the simple ingredients, you know? Tomato, mm -hmm. onion, and garlic, all fresh. olive oil, or whatever oil he's using, you know? Yeah, oh, it looks so yummy. I would have this without fish, but the fish will make it better. Yeah. Stop. So, turmeric. Kurkum. Yeah, turmeric. And add the kurkum. 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 Sahir. He's eyeballing it. Pepper. Pepper? That looks so yummy. Salt. So it's salt snacks? I don't understand anything, but it's okay. Is it tamam, tamam, tamam. Tamam, tamam, tamam. tamam. Zain, Zain. So uh, salt needs to be not that much. Mm-hmm, because it already has salt. And here we go, adding the final ingredient. Wow. The dried fish. It smells so good, right? It smells so good. So we're almost at the final steps, right? All we have to do is add some water, we'll cover it, and then we'll let it sit there for about 20 minutes, and then it'll be done. Yes. Oh, it looks so delicious. Nice, pasty. Fish, mm, with big chunks of tomato in there. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh. <laughs> Habibi, oh Habibi. gosh. <laughs> Mesopotamian dish, can't wait. Akil Araka. Karakala. Akil Araka. Akil Araka. Okay, Araki, Araki. Araki fish. And then in Gul Araka, Araka. Jarasuni, Yani, Araki, Sin Araka, Gul. It's okay. <laughs> We'll learn later. <laughs> Arabic in one year. Uh, oh, water? Uh, okay, so I'm gonna uh, add some water. Uh, the whole thing? Half of it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. So. Thank okay. you. Thank you. That's it? That's it. That's it. Now it's becoming Mahrutha. Can't wait. This is gonna be so good. What is Araki? Araki rice. Hi, Kake, David. Oh, Kake. Oh, it's the best. <laughs> this guy had to. He's like, you have to have the Kake. This is, this is the crispy rice. <laughs> <laughs> Baby. Give me more, <laughs> please. I'm hungry. Baby. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, yeah. All right, Tavir. Good afternoon, Habibi. Mmm. Delicious. Yeah, I'm easy. Wow. So wow. crunchy. So moist, this one. Fantastic. Can't wait to pair these two together. For me? Yeah. أغلب اللي هنا يحبوها البيت الناس يحبوها. أنا أكون مميزة حبيبي للمميزين. كاكة. كاكة. You know what makes it better when you haven't eaten in six hours. Look at it. David, no. Close. So that's going to cook for about 20 minutes. And in the meantime, we're going to also make the appetizer, which are small fish that he's going to bread and then fry. Okay, let's go. Okay. Let's go. Right. So he's gonna clean it, right? Clean out all the organs. Take off the scales now. That's my stuff. Mm-hmm. And I eat the treat. 
So he just cleaned the fish. He gutted them, took off all the scales, and now he's washing, and then from here he's gonna bread, and then straight to fry. Okay, let's go. So now he's mixing water with the, flour. The, the spoon? He's gonna add some turmeric now. We got some black pepper. So he's gonna add some salt to the fish. It's gonna be really salty, huh? It's gonna be tasty. He said, kind of. It's a funny guy. Nice. To be honest with you, I can't wait for this appetizer. Now that he's done breading, he adds a second layer of breading. Hello, yeah. Hello, Oh, this is gonna be so good. Sweet, sweet, yeah. It's gonna be good fish. Good fish. And so this fish, I'm guessing you eat the whole thing, like just like that, right? Just eat the whole thing once it's fried. Okay. <laughs> doesn't fit? The last one doesn't fit. Wow. Look at, that. Look at that, like golden brown, huh? Oh, <laughs> you're too kind. What do you think? Oh man, this has wet my appetite. I cannot wait to eat one of these. And that's it, we're ready to eat. Ready? Come I'll on. I'll, yeah, take, I'll take one straight to the... <gasps> right now he's been in the appetizer, right? So he added rice, the fish, tomato, onion, and lemon. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Hi. Oh look, still, you still have a little bit of, oh, for uh, me, for me? Hey, hey, very Mmm, super tasty. Oh, there is bones, right? There is some bones. Oh, why not? Mm -hmm. No. No? <laughs> bones, too many bones. All right, chef, I'm feeding me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Buttery, a little bit of zest or lime juice. Mm. I'm ready. Let's eat. Let's go. <laughs> Can't wait anymore, bro. Uh, nice bread. Oh, he breaks the bread. The usual, right? That looks so good. Nice and thick. Oh wow, we have more fish? So this is our appetizer. We also got an extra fish, the mazgouf. That is the national dish of Iraq. Yeah, we're ready for the food. Let's go, let's sit down. And this is it, our massive feast. Mesopotamian food, right? So what is the name of it again? Mahruthe. Mahruthe. Mazgouf, national dish? Yes. These? Zuri. Zuri. And the chef also has to pour something on top of here, right? Come over, chef. Come over. Yes, let's go. This is the tashrib style. Oh, it looks amazing. So that is what? like broth or the gravy that was cooked with this, right? Yes. Right. Fantastic. So he's going to mix it up now. Oh, 
Oh yes, that looks good. He's just putting a mountain of fish on top. It looks phenomenal. Little onion. Perfect. And then how do we eat this? Sheep style. Oh yeah, like this? Yeah, grab this. Okay. Grab it a little bit. Then what? We're gonna eat. Mm. Oh my gosh. It's salty. Mm. Mm. But so much tomato. Love it. Nice onions too. The bread is like falling apart. It's been soaking, right? We're gonna try some onion on top. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm gonna add some onions on top. Oh yeah? Yes. Smooth a little bit of that. Oh, what a great dish. I've never had a dish like this. Mm, nice fluffy bread, it's been soaking. Got this dried fish. So you're gonna add an onion too. Dude, this is so good. I think this might be my favorite dish so far in Iraq. It's really good, yes. Mmm, very crunchy. And there are some bones in it, so be careful. My friend over here is getting lots of bones. I've been good so far. You know, for me, that's so the one problem with uh, fish is always the bones. But this is so, so nice. Mm. I personally don't love dry fish like this. But with the mixed tomato, onion, the paste, I mean, it's a great pairing, right? It really breaks up the saltiness of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if not, it'd be way too salty, right? Mm. The onion. Mm hmm. Okay. So, this Zuri fish, everyone likes it differently. Some people just grab it and bite it. Like this. Oh, yeah, just like that? Mm. Yes. Mm. Oh, but there are bones in here. Mm. Small bones. Oh, man, this is good. With turmeric? Phenomenal. Yes. But I like to do the mini sandwich style. Mini sandwich, huh? Yes. Everything in Iraq can be sandwiched. Remember Got it. that. I know, I know. So just like this. Just like that. Mm-hmm. Mm Very good. Double lemon. Mmm. Very tasty. Light breading, very um, very buttery, right? Mmm. Mm. Care for the bones. Lots of bones here. Oh, but it's so good. I really loved it with with. Uh... Nice. So you're eating that? I'm gonna have some rice. Mm hmm. Mmm. Let me get some of this. And add it to the rice. Wow. Break it up in there. Mmm. Pairs well with rice too. Mm hmm. And the sides, we got pickles, so I'm gonna grab one right here. Take a bite. Mm hmm. So I think this one has like dates and it has vinegar. Mmm. Pomegranate. Pomegranate. Mmm. This is sweet pickles. Mm hmm. Mm. Well, we still have the national dish, so I'm just going to take a bite from right there. Get in here. Try to get whatever is meaty enough, right? Mm. And then you also should pair it with some bread, right? You can. You can eat it alone. Everything is so good, but number one, this one. Mm. Just going to grab a piece of bread right here. Let's do it, my friend. Let's do it. So we are in the south, everything is fish in the south, right? This is like the first city entering down to, to the Gulf, right? Sort of. But this is the southern uh, region or southern state, right? Yes, we have entered the southern state. All marshes, all Gulf, and all rivers. Amazing. So over the next uh, few days, we're going to be exploring. We're going to go to marshes, we're going to go to Basra. Can't wait for that. But for now, let's enjoy this. This is so tasty, but pull out these bones. Mm. If you don't like salt, I don't know if you're going to like this. <laughs> mm. It's very salty. Very salty, but with the right 
additions, mm -hmm. you can balance that out. You can make it a perfect song. Yeah, the tomato and the bread balances it. Yes. This is a very rare dish. You cannot find this at any restaurant, only at people's homes. So unless somebody invites you over to have this dish, it's almost impossible to find. So Ali, we have to give a big thanks to Chef and my friend here. Chabot. Chabot, thank you so much for arranging this. Thank you. It was amazing. Look at this, guys. What a feast. How many men eat from this? A whole tribe. A whole tribe. <laughs> thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. Hey, chokran, chokran, chokran. Oh my gosh, the fish, right? This is what we had earlier. So the way he did it, right, is he put it into super hot water and made it soft so they can take it apart. Because right now it is like, look at that, super hard, right? Right. <laughs> it's pretty amazing fish. It was very tasty. I mean, it was good. It was salty. Two weeks. Two weeks. They dry for two weeks here. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, it's amazing. And two weeks, two weeks. One month. Yeah. So one month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, it dries out, and once it's dry, you can eat it later in life, right? Um, but it has to be like that. It has to be soaked in water so it gets soft, and then he takes it apart, takes off you know, the fins, the scales, and then obviously takes out the bones. Uh, great fish. You have a few other fish here. You have chickens. This is a butcher shop. Again, this is a little gory, but this is the reality, and this is how you get the freshest stuff. And when people tell me that, you know, why you, know, you show this type of thing, because this is real, right? So we know it's fresh, right? It came from here, yes. right here down the street. My friend, Chef. Hey, chokran. <laughs> That's amazing. All right, guys, we're ready to go to Ur. It is uh, 4 p.m. We're going to be about 40 minute drive from here. Hey, my friend, here you go, here you go. Hello. Let's go, let's go to Ur. Let's go to Ur. 40 minute drive. Luckily, we're going to get there at sunset because you need to beat the heat. If you go there around 2 to 3, 4, you die of the heat. 47 degrees Fahrenheit. And where's our car? You're going to be that fish. I'm going to be that fish? Where's the car? And where's the car? Oh, there he is. Let's go. All right. It is time for Ur. It is. I mean, from the pictures, it, it looks insane. I, I cannot imagine how it's going to look, you know, in person. Let's go. We've been driving for about 20 minutes, and all you see is super, super vast okay, desert everywhere. It doesn't end. It really doesn't end. You have like a prison on the way. There's a few checkpoints, and ahead of us, we can see Ur. It's uh, just about 50 more minutes to get there, right? Yeah, I guess so. You saw the prison, you know? Those prisoners are never getting out, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it's so exciting. It's like, it's insane to be like in the middle of the desert, you know? It's yeah. like, it feels abundant. Wow, that's big, bro. Woo, here we are in Ur. Let me open this for you. Perfect. Let's go. Look at that. Beautiful temple, huge. So that's like 6,000 years old right there. Yes. 6,000 years, this back to 3,800 BC, before Christ. What? Hey man, it's massive. Jafar. Is epic. Thanks for our coming to see uh, our civilization, and I mean in our civilization for all the human, because always the civilization and the holy places for for all. Uh, the name of uh, the site Ur, but the name of the oldest civilization here called Sumerian. One of the important achievements of the Sumerian, the writing. First writing called iconographic like pictures. Second, cuneiform. So cuneiform is the second oldest written language evolving from iconographic and preceded hieroglyphic writing approximately 50 years. Hieroglyphic in Egypt. But before that, iconographic and cuneiform in Iraq during the time of the Sumerian. This is the Zuggerat in Zur. This dates back over 6,000 years. So the Sumerian Empire started in 4,000 years BC and then lasted up to 2100 BC. After that, it was Babylonian period. And this one in particular was discovered in the year 1922. So we're here on the 100 year anniversary. So there was three levels. Uh, pieces of it are renovated, other pieces are original. So follow me, we're gonna go to the top, to the stairway. 
wow. Great time to be here, right? 5 p.m. Look at this. This you can tell is original. Look at this stairway. It's old rock, 6,000 year old rock. Come, come. Oh, steep. A little bit about the temple. Yes, this is called Zugrat Tofu. And they use it as for worship as temple of the moon god. And in the Sumerian language, they call God Nana, and sometimes Nanar in, in Babylonian called Sin. So, dive, so the staircase, yes. pieces are original, some pieces aren't, yes. right? The foundation of the stair original, and the top also original, and some parts in the middle also original, which they use bitumen that's original, and later they use material cement. That's uh, doing maintenance in 1961. But the original things return back to 2113 years BC. So during the third dynasty of the Sumerian. This is a pretty fun, writing, original. Okay, so that's the original writing, first writings. This which called cuneiform. So here original, here they used bitumen, and the color of the bricks here became dark. So this is original. And here you see the sprint of reeds putting with the, in the wall uh, reeds uh, to reduce expansion also. So what are those holes? This holes because the ziggurat inside mud. So when happen in uh, rain in winter, some of the water of the rain seep inside. So the drops of the rain uh, comes out through these holes. Also, uh, uh, the time they used material bitumen and bitumen in, in summer and hot weather expanded. So they left the holes as joints for expansion. Like now they leave joints in the railway line and the big building for expansion yeah so if you guys don't know about ancient structures most of these were covered by sand that's why they're so preserved right so they discovered this in 1922 before that it was covered by sand completely the entire site this one in particular obviously look how high we are so sand over everything a few thousand years of abandonment sand slowly you know went up what about the pyramids same thing same thing with the pyramids yeah, the, the pyramids were covered for I think three thousand years. You know, completely. I have no idea, but like imagine like these giant structures. Nobody has a, a, an idea that's there. You know, just like people yeah. hanging out, and I mean, like you see dunes, right? That's all you saw. Wow. Yeah, amazing. So let's go to the top. Yes. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Let's go. And right here, we're at the very top, right? So this is the end of the second level, and over here would have been the third level. So it was, uh, I think. All of this original, and you said originally it was like 22 meters, but there was like five meters that, that have gone to the third level, right? More than, more than, more than uh, that time, about 26 meters, and now 17 meters. Wow. Yeah, third level. So this is inside like this. This is great. Mud and mud, here mud bricks. Yeah, they just put it there, they didn't bake it. Yes, so this is mud brick, you can hear, and here material mud between it. You could maybe clear here, not mud, mud the bricks. So they built it in the sun. Okay, so we just finished here in the temple. Now we're gonna walk down and look over some of the ruins. There's a lot of tombs here as well. <sighs> Good. We're alone, man. Check this out. We're alone. No one's here. It's amazing. How, how is this possible? <laughs> Next. Uh, we're going to see uh, temple, the Blanmar Temple and the Shungi Palace. Yeah. And this is one of the oldest uh, now standing archway. Leonardo we are just see putting that layer on the top new and uh, front new and other things original. So it's one of the oldest arches yeah, in the world. Yes. Wow. And it, what's the temple called? Called Dubl Alma. Dubl Yeah, it means the great platform. The meaning of Dubl Alma. What is this? Shungi Palace. Shungi Palace. The name. Most of the building built during time of his name Shulgi, just the foundation built during time of King Kornamu, but there is a royal palace. Each side 55 meters and one main door, just that door. It's an ancient palace from Mesopotamia, bro. Right, guys, we have to run. The tour here closes at 6 p.m. and we still have one more place we can see and it's the house of the prophet Abraham. He spent most of his life right here. Incredible. Let's go. Abraham, huh? Crazy, right? Like I had no you, idea. Me either. I mean, like, I'm clueless apparently, but I wasn't paying attention to history class, but it's so excited, man. Like, it's crazy to be here, you know? Abraham, can, can you imagine that, like, people, like, were standing here? What, what like, 4000 BC? That's so nuts, you know? It's the beginning of civilization, right here. Let's go. From 
myself out the window. Woo! For the Abraham's house. <laughs> oh my gosh. So behind us we have the house of Abraham the prophet and that's in the Bible in Genesis. Genesis chapter 11, 31 to chapter 14, 16. And you that here and that is the reason the Pope is doing mass here because the holy books, especially in the Bible, in the Old Testament, indicated that Pope Abraham and this land. So, the, when did the Pope come here? What, what? Yeah, he come here and doing mass here. But this, what, what year was that? Before one year and uh, four or five minutes ago. So like 2021? Yes, around yes. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Yes. Incredible. Yes. So let's see it, let's see the structure. So as you can see, lots of arches. It's a big house, right? Huge. Careful here. Let's walk in here. Wow. Look at this. Can you imagine that Abraham was here? If you don't know who Abraham the prophet is, he's like the father of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Look, let's go through here. Wow. Oh, careful here, careful here. Look at this. This must have been a well. shells. Most of excavators, they thought kitchen. Some they thought library, but most of them they thought kitchen. Why they thought kitchen? Before, because first excavator, he found ash here in the bottom. At that time, of course, they cooking on the wood. So they thought that here, kitchen, and behind the door, on the left hand, they thought bathroom. Here. They thought that here, bathroom. It's for, for washing, not yeah, to, yeah. To, to, yeah. Why they thought Incredible. bathroom? Because the level of this room higher than the slope, and there the drainage. Now the drainage covered by sand. Oh, so that's a drainage system right yes. there. Okay, yeah. Yes. So obviously it looks like a well right there. You know, a big hole in the ground. You, you want to go upstairs? Upstairs, let's go. Take picture from the top. Come, come. Careful your head. Oh wow! Look at the sunset. Yeah, here like here. Oh wow! Yeah. Look at this. How many rooms did he have? Yeah, how many rooms? Five courtyards, sisters, big house. And why they thought this house for one person? Because excavators found interior doors. Interior doors, the wall not closed. Mm -hmm. That is the reason they th said for one family. Because they found interior doors. If second family, they not found wall here. Closed yeah. and door just from outside. Exactly. But here they found interior doors. That means for one family. So one family, all these rooms. Yeah, yeah, yes. And what's amazing about Zur is that only 5% has been excavated. The other 95% is still under the sand. Incredible. My friend, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate thank you. it. I appreciate thank you. it. Uh, but before we leave, I showed you drainage there also. Okay, show me, show me. <laughs> And that is our tour in Nasiriyah, the birthplace of Mesopotamia. We had a Mesopotamian lunch. We came here, we saw the archaeological site of Ur. And that's it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was an incredible experience. If you loved it, thumbs up, comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. Hopefully, I don't fall into Abraham's home. I'm joking. <laughs>